I do not. Uh, okay, these are my conflict of interest, and this is, I will touch swiftly through these topics. IPF is the main actor. Uh, IPF is a perineoplastic disease, pathogenesis clue, who's between IPF and lung cancer, clinical aspect and therapy. Um, we know that in patients with intersticial lung disease, mainly with idiopathic point fibrosis, the incidence of lung cancer is significantly higher compared to the same patient with the same smoking history or other risk factors. And this risk uh, increased significantly during the years of follow-up. Uh, sorry. Okay. That already a long time ago, Libov suggested that uh, IPF can be considered a perineoplastic disease. Yes, I have time, but but we know now that it is a perineoplastic disease because it's characterized by atypical bronchial proliferation with uh, this kind of atypical epithelial uh, stem cells, bronchial stem cells confirmed recently by molecular analysis. And we know that a subset of patients with IPF in lung tissue have expression of PDL1 in these epithelial cells. Frankly speaking, the link is not actually between IPF and lung cancer, but between usual intracellular pneumonia and lung cancer. And usual intracellular pneumonia as a morphological entity can be observed in other in ILDs, for example, chronic fibrosis or fibrosing um, hypersensitivity pneumonitis or collagen vascular disease. And we know that the cancer phenotype is a little bit different compared to patients with uh, non-IPF. We have an increased incidence of peripheral squamous carcinoma or adenocarcinoma with bronchial phenotype. And we know that also the molecular profile is different. We do not have EGFR mutations in the large majority of the cases where we have um, mainly KIRAS mutation and MET overexpression. And in a part of patients, almost half of the cases, we have a PDL1 expression. So this could be an interesting point for therapeutic approaches and pathogenetic consideration. The lung cancer appears at the peripheral of the lung in the only coming areas with small nodules or ground glass opacities surrounding cysts. And what is the problem of diagnosis? Can be done, uh, can be done in, in the regular way, but we have three points to consider. First of all, the risk of acute exacerbation is significantly uh, increased with uh, invasive approaches. You can have a diagnosis of lung cancer even if you don't have any CT scan aspect indicating the presence, the presence of lung cancer. And when you find peripheral squamous carcinoma, you have to consider IPF as a diagnosis by definition. Uh, this is a patient with lung cancer. We went to bronchoscopy and he developed acute exacerbation, sorry, uh, in the contralateral lung. This is a cryobiopsy in which we have only cambing, but in a small part of the tissue, we have adenocarcinoma. And when you find squamous carcinoma it's at the periphery, it, because it appears in this uh, atypical squamous metaplasia area around the only cambing changes. Treatment is still under debate. We know that we have some, we don't have yet guidelines, ERS, is organizing a task force on guidelines of IPF diagnosis and treatment. We have to consider that any kind of intervention, uh, chemotherapy um, or um, surgery are associated with a significant increase of acute exacerbation with death in 80% of the patients. And we know this other 
way around. We know that patient with interstitial lung disease, subtle interstitial lung disease submitted to uh, surgery can uh, develop acute exacerbation in a significant um, uh, rate. So pay attention to the CT scan if you can find at least interstitial lung abnormalities. Proton therapy is probably a new approach, a way to avoid radiation injury and also surgical uh, side effects, but we have still anecdotal data and not definite data. So sparing one minute and 20 seconds, I stop here and ready for discussion. Thank you very much for your attention.